Hi there, I'm Adam Kirbas and this is my novel, the video. Nein, Ines. Ines sits in front of the TV. She has her arm wrapped around her son Juan, her boy. They're watching TV like they do every day in the afternoon. It is some sort of a family pastime for Ines. She and her son, they feel close, a close bond together. This is the bond which every day in their life renews, gives Ines meaning and a place in her life. There is no, there's a knock on the door. It's not usual that Ines gets guests, visitors. She has only a few friends, but nevertheless, they do not frequent her very often. Ines rather lives a very secluded life, but her life is filled. Her life is filled with all the responsibility she has as a mother for her son, for some Juan, and for herself, for what she want to do, what she wants to become in her life. She still hasn't figured out her life so far, the broken relationship with Marco, this disappointment that she was not loved, that she was not attractive to him, was not attractive enough for him to be faithful to her. And then in all her misery, in all the downward spiral of her life, she got a blessing, a boy, a child, a continuation of herself, something she could grab on, something she could deal with and be the mother she always wanted to be, to be responsible for someone else. And whenever Juan looks up on her at his mother, Whenever he seeks for guidance, Ines is firstly always scared. Scared that she would do something wrong. Scared that she would do something inappropriate. Scared that she would in the end disappoint this little fella. This fella who depends on her. Who without her cannot live. Who expects her, his mother, to be there for him. To solve all issues. To have all answers. And this is indeed worrisome for Ines. Worrisome because she fears that she could lose the love of her boy once he discovers that she's nothing but an ordinary woman. That she's nothing but one of these women who know fancy words, who know their world, way around things, but nothing else comes out of them. She still has this inferiority complex that she is not worth worth loving still the scars of Marco his unfaithfulness have seared themselves into her memory she's she's still haunted by these thoughts she still wants to satisfy other people but then whenever Marco Whenever Juan looks at her, this little boy who has so much of her, then she feels assured of herself, the meaning and the purpose she has in her life, the responsibility to be there for someone, to care for someone, to protect someone. And this little fella, this Juan, her world needs protection from all the world outside. Ines gets up. She approaches the door. She wonders who could that be, maybe a neighbor, whatever it is. She opens the door and she sees a young man, an attractive man. Inish feels an excitement. She hasn't been together with a man, with a man since Marco. She hasn't been thrilled and excited. And sure, she as well craves for this male attention, for this attention that is unique to the man who cannot get enough of a woman, this sexual attraction, this sexual appeal, she craves for it, she craves for being the cause of an erection for a man, the cause for sexual 
fantasies, these thoughts still haven't abandoned her. She still wants to feel like a woman, wants to perceive like an attractive woman. This temptation, these thoughts, they immediately inundate her thoughts the moment she saw she sees this attractive man standing in front of her. He looks shy. He looks worried. He looks reticent, doesn't know what he wants to say, why he came here, what is his purpose, Inesh asks him, and she scrutinizes him, his face, his attractiveness, and even though she, she tries to fight this because she doesn't want to make it obvious, obvious in that sense that she doesn't want to make it make it obvious that she's attractive, attracted to a man. After Marco, she has become cautious, like a slept child, like a burned child. She doesn't want to give anyone a purpose as well as an opportunity to hurt her. She has become secluded, introverted after this relationship with Marco and of course cautious, cautious whenever she approaches a man, an attractive man. She doesn't want to be perceived as this girl who is dependent of men, who is dependent on male attention, but however she cannot help herself, cannot, cannot help herself to envision her life, what this would be, this man, this attractive man who would be craving for her, who would tell her, I cannot get enough of you, you are my world. The love this man could spend her, the thrill, this, the excitement she could feel, all these possibilities, all these would be, they thrill her, they excite her the moment she looks at that man. The man starts speaking with a, with a humble, feeble voice. My name is Eduardo. Inish doesn't know any Eduardo. She would have known when someone like him would be in her vicinity, would be part of her relationship, friends and so on. And she, Inish, at that moment thinks to herself she actually does not go out very often. She does not connect with other people. People. She is not among men. She doesn't show herself. She feels a craving that she should go out, man. She, that she should present herself to other men, be around them, and gain a thrill through their attention, through their gazes, and through the through the excitement looking at her. The man continues. I'm the son of Estrella. Estrella. This name comes in Inesh's mind, but somehow she doesn't know where it came from. She's not sure who this Eduardo is and Estrella. Maybe there is a misunderstanding when this happens. People get the wrong address, people speak to the wrong people. Maybe Inesh thinks to herself, this is one of those lucky chances, one of those opportunities people talk about. and. Love couples years later narrate to all their friends that by chance and by accident they met with each other. They came to each other. Or was it indeed an accident? Was it indeed by chance? Or maybe it was fate? Maybe they were supposed to meet each other, be with each, each other, be attracted to each other. Maybe this was all the fate of plan. Whatever it is, what these young folks talk about, Inish thinks about this, because she is in a way attractive, attracted to that man who looks at her, who looks at her fleetingly, who is uncomfortable, this frills Inish, because she, after Marco, feared that she would be always the submissive part of the relationship she made herself she scolded herself, she 
thought to herself that if she would have been more dominant, if she would have been this woman who takes charge and control, maybe she could have controlled the outcome of Marco, even though she convinces herself she does not need a, a cheating ass like Marco. She doesn't need someone who does not respect her, but still one part in her clings on Marco, still one part in her imagines how it would have been if she would have lived with Marco. Of, of course, she more and more realizes that this part who, who still clings on Marco actually clings on the idea of a relationship, how it would be when she would have someone, when she would could get together with someone, when Juan would have a real father, when she would have someone to lean on. This would be her world and th this is her worries. Occasionally she worries that she may get too old, too, uh, too old for another man, too old for the maritime market. She, she, she still wants to marry one day a man this fulfillment she has been dreaming of her childhood, throughout her childhood. And she assumes probably a lot of women think about getting married, finding the prince of her dreams. And Enes is no different of it all. She thinks in th these terms, but she wants to be attractive to other men as well. Be, be seen as an, an attractive woman. And she thought to herself the only way that she can assert herself, the only way she can prevent herself from being disappointed, humiliated again, is when she takes charge, when she controls. And the, this Eduardo, this fella who struggles with his words, who is meek, who is feeble, gains even more attraction in the eyes of Inish because now she feels that in the case of a relationship it, it would be easier for her to assert herself to make clear the foundation of a relationship to control himself to prevent him from going astray to make him see to break him because love Ines thinks is something something you of course feel is about feeling of course is about attraction but it is as well as about mind about thoughts about being reasonable reasonable with someone reasonable in the means of your future what you want to do what you want to accomplish these things these thoughts are very important and some she thinks some men just need to be taught what is important in life Inish doesn't know whether she wants to interrupt him. She's struggling with herself. What should she say to him? Should she awaken him from this obvious misunderstanding? She doesn't know any Eduardo. She doesn't know any Estrella. But she wants to linger on for a while. Maybe something could come out of it. She's f thinking. She tries to convey that she is thinking about who this man is, Eduardo Estrella. And while she pretends to be thinking, she imagines that maybe she looks attractive to him, to this man. She craves for his attention. She tries to scrutinize his gaze. Does he look at her in this special way, in this appealing way, in this male, male gazing way, which according to Ines and which she has read in a lot of magazines that men who look at an attractive woman imagine her naked. She's thrilled by this excitement and she tries to take up a pose which would show to herself that show to him and to herself that she is still an attractive woman, that she is still one of those women one can be together with one can enjoy life, feel what ought to be felt in that period of their life, what everyone craves for, which seems to be the center of all being, love, 
love and nothing else. But in the eyes and facial complexion of the man, there's trouble. He looks like a troubled soul, someone who has been struggling through life. And there is, even though them, there are some traits of compassion, but there is as well as pain. Pain, Enish cannot quite fathom. What is he worried about? What is he struggling with? What is this all about? More and more she gets wondrous. She wonders, what is this purpose of this? What is he aiming? What is he looking for? Then Eduardo breaks out. You visited my mother. Now it dawns on Inish. Now she's fallen from seven heaven. Now she more and more grasps who this man possibly could be. Who this Eduardo possibly could be. Who this Estrella is. The son of Estrella Eduardo. What this is all about. And more and more the smile, the excitement in Ines, in Ines' face disappears. She gets stern, somber. What is this all about, Estrella? This episode in her life, the, the identity theft she went through. In the end, she thought to herself and could soothe herself that she solved the issue, that she told this woman to stop it even though she would have preferred that the police would have done something and wouldn't have just sent her their way. And she hoped that it would suffice, that her words struck this woman and she would never have to deal with these issues again because Inesh felt stupid, stupid as well as hopeless and helpless. She alone, how could she force someone to stop it? And would they stop it? She had wasted a lot of thought on it. But in the end, she could esteem herself that it would be over, over, finally over. She told them maybe these identity fraudsters, they would never expect that someone would find out. Someone would find out what they are doing, what they are doing behind their back. And once they have been, they have been seen, once they have been detected, and once someone makes them aware that they know that they would immediately stop in a of course fall about it that they probably will not stop stealing the identities of others but at least she wants to she wants them to leave her alone and now this Eduardo stands in front of her this attractive man Ines now again feels this growing this uh, appointment she had with Marco, maybe this attractive man, was deliberately sent her way to swoon her, to turn her head, to attract her, to appeal to her. Maybe they think too that she is a woman and a lonely woman who craves for male attention. What do these pe people know about her? What do these people expect her? All these prejudices they have or might not have against her. Is she an open book? Do people actually know that she's struggling? Or does she, does she struggle, struggle with male attention at all? How do these people know? Inesh is taken aback. The, the man looks at her for a while tries to figure out whether his words made an impression on him without knowing that Inish probably doesn't even know the name of, him, of his mother. After a while he, he continues speaking, trying to, trying to pierce this, the ensued silence. You came to my mother it is about this issue, this issue, Ines, 
Ines doesn't like this word, this issue. This issue means a lot to us. Someone stole her identity. This is not an issue. This is something scary and this is something she always thought illegal. But how the police reacted to all this? She could not believe it. Is this just a collateral issue? A trifle? What is it? She is not aware of it. Your mother stole my identity. Ines Belosot. In her voice is anger, hatred, of course, and of course the feeling of being diminished. They just thought they could do this. They thought they could just take over her identity and pretend and do whatever they want. There may be a misunderstanding response Eduardo, no, there is no misunderstanding. I got the parking ticket. I got the fee. There are no, there is no misunderstanding. My mother apologized. Eduardo is insistent. As if this would be a normal thing and this is what is bothering Ines. Her identity was stolen and this guy in front of her just talks as if it would be a normal thing, as if it would be something people may have issues with someone parked in your parking lot or someone left something in the driveway or a car blocked the entrance of a place. Whatever it is, it all sounds weird to English. What is this guy talking about? And he seems so calm. This is an offense, she thinks to herself. She read the penal code. Identity theft is a serious issue. But this guy talks about misunderstandings. And so, and Inish, she first heard of it. And she's, she's scared, scared than more more than anyone, that she could get involved with the police, that this could have legal charges, because no matter whether she, no matter whether she considers herself as part of America and as an American citizen, you never know how these things in America can go. Things can go south very fast in America, especially when you think that you have the law on your side. She has heard a lot of stories, stories people tell that in America, the courts, your chances are 50-50 that you get out of there and that right will be presumed, that law finds its way. You have to be very, very careful and she doesn't want to get into it and she heard a lot of stories, people who went broke while trying to pursue justice. She wants to be careful. Her world, her Juan, his future, everything depends on it. Even her future depends on it. She thought to herself after the relationship with Marco went broke, she thought to herself that maybe her life came to an end. That it was the end of her story. It was the end of anything she believed in, the end of a dream, the end, the end of an illusion. And thereafter, she didn't know how to continue, what she should do with herself. And the worst thing back then was when she found out that she's pregnant, pregnant with the child of a guy who did not pay any respect and attention to her. Her life was at a point where she thought that there would be no continuation whatsoever, that it would end. But then, more and more, this little fella after he was born, and she, up to the eve of his birth, wasn't even sure whether she want to keep him. She, Inish, this faithful woman, this Catholic, she was brought up as a Catholic, so therefore 
abortion was not an option. So she gave birth to the child, but was not sure whether she want to keep him. But then this little fella, this little creature looked at her, held her hand, and it gave her meaning, purpose, the strength to continue. And for him, and for him alone, she fights herself. And through him, she lives her own life, her purpose. And this could all be swept away. This could all be taken away by whatever comes to her way, to her way. Because in the end, Inesh does not believe that people help each other. People rather hurt each other. Hasn't she seen the worst in human mind so far? According to Ines, this was the worst in her life. That Marco was not faithful to her. That he derided her. That he diminished her. This was hideous. And she felt like she looked in the abyss of human depravity. So it is a big deal for Ines that someone stands in front of her, tries to excuse that his mother apparently stole her identity. Ines wants to wrap this thing up. Her son, Juan, is next to her. He stands next to her mother, looks at this man, this stranger, I want this thing to end, Inesh tells him with a severe voice. She wants to sound resolute, she wants to sound determined, a threat. She wants this to end, she doesn't want to deal with this issue at all. She has better things to do. Her life is in a different path, in a different stage. She's not a criminal, she's not a crook. She thinks to herself, she doesn't want to have to do with criminals. And she knows a lot of them, especially in Mexico. She heard about them, she, about these fellows who fancy themselves, who like to be gangsters, who think of themselves as not ordinary fellows, but as something special. People who have a special place in society, Inesh knows very well that young fellas, young fellas who get fed up with life, imagine to be a gangster, a criminal, a drug lord, whatever they fancy, someone they can boast about and therefore crave for attention. She doesn't want to get involved with one of these people, doesn't want to deal with them. That's why she tries to be resolute. Still the hope, she still has the hope that it would end. She still has the hope that once she can convey her discomfort. And of course she thinks to herself that she has to bluff because in the end she has n nothing, nothing to threaten this man with. Nothing. Not even the law was willing to act on her behalf. So a lot depends on her words, Inish more and more realize. A lot depends whether she can convince this man that she will take legal actions, that there is a way things could get even worse. I did not call the police. She tells him. Eduardo says, there is a way we can sort this out as if he didn't hear what Inish said, what Inish is trying to say, that she showed mercy, but that she can do things differently. Instead, Eduardo talks about that they are family. We, I am from Mexico and you are from Mexico. We are related, sister. We are akin. No, Inish retorts, no. 
everyone has his own life. I have my own family. I have my own people to deal with. Inesh puts her arm around Juan, her world. She wants to signal, signal that she is a mother, a mother who is protective of a child, a mother who wants to ensure the future of a child. Eduardo looks at Juan. He understands what Inish tries to convey. We are not criminals. We are just people who didn't have the luck and the privilege. This has nothing to do with luck and privilege. Where is this discussion going? What is this? What luck? What privilege has Inish Stru- struggled in her life. She's she didn't born. She wasn't born wealthy. She did. She, she didn't come with a silver spoon in her mouth in this world. She had to work for it. For it. She had to struggle for everything. And she doesn't live a fancy life. No one gave her anything. No one gifted her and bestowed her this life. She worked for it. She, therefore, is vexed by this word, privileged. What is this? A Marxist, some, some, some Marxist nonsense accusing her being protective of her child, is this, that it would be wrong and that this would have to do something with privileges? No. Inesh cannot be at his fault. No, this has nothing to do with privileges. I know my place. I know where I come from. And I'm a hard-working mother. I'm a hard-working mother. I don't want to get into troubles with law. I don't want to have to do anything with it. There is no trouble, sister. The man still continues his role play. There is no fear. There is no issue about it. A lot of people do this. There is no big deal of it. Nothing ever happened so far, so far. But Inesh is doubtful whether this man knows anything or whether this is a smarmy, sly, sly sail pitch of this man who tries to sail a solution, tries to sell her something she doesn't want to. She immediately more and more realizes that this is probably the ploy of criminals. That this is probably the way how criminals talk, how these pe- people talk to fraudsters who deceive others, who live of others, who fancy themselves with being criminals, with being above the law, with being untouchable, with being a don and not an ordinary guy who goes to work every day and who has to struggle and fight for his daily survival. She, she more and more gets appalled by him, but this good-looking man that he probably, she assumes, gets his way with all the women because of his looks. That's why they sent him. They even though Inesh doesn't know who they are, but she assumes that this is a bigger, bigger criminal organization. She knows very well from Mexico that these people, that they're never alone, that they're always a bunch of them, and the fraud alone is distorting her. The fraud alone makes her dizzy if she has to deal with a flood of criminals. If she has to deal with professional identity thieves, what then? What will happen then? She gets scary. She has to be cautious. More and more she understands that she probably has to soften her voice. She heard she heard a lot of stories about the cartel, about drug lords and about all these people who kill people in a very brutal way. And she gets scared. And more and more, Inesh feels herself alone. She feels the coldness, 
a breeze, a cold breeze sweeping through her body and through her mind. More and more she feels alone, left stranded. And she remembers how the policeman treated her, how she, how she just just said to her they should talk. Maybe he's one he's in on it. Maybe he's part of this criminal organization of this cartel and she heard a lot of stories about it that the Mexican drug cartel that they control a lot in America are they true in the past she never really believed in one of these stories she was one of those women who some sort of half-heartedly listened to them maybe they only are brought forth by white folks by white racists who just want to throw dirt on Mexican immigrants. But more and more, in this moment where Eduardo, this man, stands in front of her, all these thoughts, all these prejudices, and she thought of them in the past as prejudices, all they appear in front of her. What if this guy is indeed one of them? What if this guy is indeed one of these cartel of this drug ring or whatever it is we can talk about everything he continues for Inesh it is clear it is a sale pitch and she feels her throat her, f- her throat tightened what's what's the best response for it and this with the parking tickets, this was actually my issue. This was my fault. My mother is not responsible for it. My mother actually is a very nice person. You can ask everyone around the neighborhood. She is a helpful, a good-hearted woman. She does not wrong anyone. She has never wronged anyone. And she would never, ever do anything wrong. She goes to church every Sunday. She's very religious and I would like you to meet her, hang out with her. Your boy could probably have a grandma, a grandma he can be around with. Juan has a grandma. Inesh shrieks back at the severity of her voice, was it now too heavy? Was this too rough? Was the response too rough? She still hasn't made up her mind how to respond to this indolence. Her voice should be smoothing. She should be convincing this man with words that she is a weak woman and that they should not do anything to her and that she didn't mean a harm but she is reasonably worried and concerned concerned as a mother for her child that she doesn't want to get involved in all these issues and that she wants this to stop now of course of course you have a grandmother but our I'm just saying that there is a way we can talk about this. Everything is up to negotiation. I know this may not be easy, but it is not easy for us as well. The man grabs in his pocket. Inesh feels his stomach tightened. What comes next? And he, he takes out a bundle of banknotes. There's always something we can talk about. This is no big issue. Just one parking ticket. I will pay for it and I will even pay for your inconvenience. The man looks at Inish. Eduardo's face is more and more elated as if money could solve the issue. Inish looks at the money. Of course she could need some money. Of course she is struggling to make ends meet as a as a single mother marco isn't supporting her family at all marco doesn't even care about juan 
Yes, of course, is in one part disappointed because she still hoped that the moment she, she gave Marco a son, an heir, that he would change his affection. But after she realized that even a son did not change his feelings towards her, that he wasn't thankful, that he wasn't appreciated, that he didn't care about her at all, she was distraught. But on the other hand, and she's thankful that there is no close bond between Juan and his father, and that she, as his mother, is the closest person in his world, that this boy is her everything. She fears that if the influence of Marco, this man who does not respect women, if his influence prevails, or worse, that Juan, a little boy, in which she sees herself, sees parts of her genes, her DNA, that this little boy would become someone like Marco, that he would be disrespectful, that he would treat people wrongly, not duly, and not how they should be treated. Inish more and more realizes that she has to be careful. She has to be careful not to do anything wrong. Not to do what is expected of her. She's thoughtful. How should she react? What, she, what should she tell this man? But she can't look at the money. The money is dangerous. More and more she realizes that, that if she gives this man the feeling and the notion that she can be bought, that she can be convinced with money, that she would lose everything. That, is, that this is dangerous. Dangerous in many accounts. Dangerous that this could open the door for more. For dangerously more. Ines tries to sway away her attention from the money. She still wants to be resolute. This was not all about money. This was never about money. She's not interested in money. What could money ever buy her? What could money ever help her? She, she doesn't even know anything that could money buy her, even though she would probably come up with some issues, more probably Juan's future. She thinks of his future, what he could do, what she could enable him to, or of her own future. She could be living somewhere else in a better place, a better home, new clothes, whatever it is. But this all looks shady to her. A man with a lot of money. And Eduard, Eduardo has a lot of money. He has. Of course, Ines doesn't know. But what Eduardo holds in his hands is actually everything he owns in his life. He came with all this money. He even lent it. Ask some of his friends whether they can just for the sake of appeal, for the sake of acting and for the sake of conveying an impression, lend him some money. He would bring it back just to see how things work out. So he brought all this money, a lot of bunch. He took it out in order to convey to, to Inesh that he is not a poor fellow, in order to convey to her that he that he, he is wealthy and that this is not only about them trying to make ends meet, that this is some serious issues, that this is just a trifle. This is how he wanted to downplay it, just a trifle. What, what of it? Everyone does it. Eduardo is sure of it. How many people did he meet? How many of them used this scheme, used this method? So what of it? 
and a woman like Inesh only would need convincing, convincing and maybe he has to pay her. Well, it is not convenient, of, of course, if he has to pay for and he would have wished that she would have never found out and it was indeed him. It was indeed him who parked the car wrongly. It was indeed him who is responsible for all this mess and it is only therefore aptly apt it is only apt that he pays for it. How much could it be? He asked himself. In the end everyone wants money. In the end he knew that Inesh was like all those Mexican immigrants who are struggling to make ends meet and a mother, especially a single mother, could always need some money, one or two hundred every month. Eduardo was even ready to pay her three to four hundred dollars every month. This is how she, she could, how he could probably satisfy her, he, f- he thought to himself. But Inesh didn't seem convinced. Eduardo more and more realizes that she has something against him, that she wasn't, that she doesn't want to get involved with all these issues. He tries to be more polite, he tries to be more convincing. But more and more he realizes that this has no success. It all is to no avail. Inish looks at him, scrutinizes him, and Eduardo immediately realizes that Inish tries to force her not to look at the money. This is Eduardo knows is one of these moments when you realize that someone wants to make sure even though he could need the money, even he, could, he or she could need the money, that this person has other thoughts in, in her mind, that she is not after the money, but that this is about something else and he loses faith. He loses faith because he promised his mother that he would solve this issue. He promised his mother that she doesn't have to fear about anything, that it will work out and that she could and that she can be just normal, that she can lay down calmly, things will work out. But more and more, he is not convinced anymore. This woman who, after he found out about her, seemed a woman who was just meek, feeble, single mother, easy to control, probably gullible or susceptible. He even imagined that she is probably in need of a man, of a strong man who takes care of her. He even imagined that maybe they would come together, Eduardo, who is single as well. But now the severe gaze of Inish has taken him aback. He tries to regain his resol- resolution, tries to still turn this thing down, tries to still, try still convincing her convincing her that no harm will ever happen, that they will come together, that this thing will work out eventually and that she has nothing to fear of there from them. You see, not all of us were lucky enough to live here without any issues. He, Eduardo, tries to make Inish aware of the plight they are dealing with, what he and his mother and others have to go through. Inish isn't quite sure why, what he's talking about, the plight, the plight and so on. What is this all about? What could it be? But Eduardo continues, 
It is not easy for us. And we try to live a decent life. But as you know or may not know, it is difficult for hardworking people. Difficult for those who want to make a living. You cannot just go to work because everywhere you go, whenever you you go go and leave your home, people immediately come after you. They come after you. With they, Eduardo means the police, custom officers. So what of it? Shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? who are honest and decent, who want to make a living, shouldn't we find a way to actually do it, do it to accomplish it. Everyone wants to have a life, a home, a place where he can live. My mother is not different. For Inish, this all sounds weird. Inish, more and more, is convinced that this is some criminal enterprise and that probably someone someone has indeed not only stolen her identity but planned some devious things with it and that she has to be aware of it. She again repeats what she started to say previously. I showed mercy. She wants to be one of these women who is not severe heart or whatever, but one can talk with her. And of course, Ines is still cautious with her words. She doesn't know this man and where this all leads to. I could have gone to the police. She lies, but I didn't. I went straight to her mother. I talked to her in person and I told her, I don't want this. I want this to stop. This is my last word on it. I don't want to talk about this issue anymore. I have a family. I have loved ones to care for. And I don't want to get involved in anything. I don't want your money. I don't want anything. And I don't want to see you ever again. These words, I don't want to see you ever again, came out a little bit rush. A little bit brusque. Enish tries to correct herself, but the words have uttered, were already uttered. She tries to, tries to soften the blow. I understand that you are struggling. Everyone does struggle. She doesn't want to call him a criminal. She has thought about a lot of stuff. She could have thrown at him that he is a crook, that he deceives people, that he lives of other people. She could have told everything. But she holds back. She doesn't want to aggravate this man, this this stranger who could be possibly a criminal, who could be someone she doesn't want to deal with or who could have friends she she doesn't want to deal with. She's cautious. She's cautious of her words. But nevertheless, she wants this thing to end. End once and for all. So therefore she tells him, I don't want to see you ever again. Eduardo is taken aback by his words. They are harsh, they are severe, and his facial composure changes from acted politeness to aggravating, aggravating discomfort and more and more to contempt. These people, they are all arrogant. They don't have a a sense of what they are going through. Eduardo, who has been struggling, who has went through a lot. His mother went through a lot. Didn't they deserve a life in the US as well? Didn't they deserve what others have? But these people, these so-called better ones, these people who think that they are better, they act like they, they can judge about all these others. They can look at them, point at them. And this is what Eduardo always is confronted with. Illegal migrants, they are mostly always considered criminals, crooks, who are on the run of the law. People who do wrong, people who have wronged others. Some shady 
folks and people look at them as if they were dirty, as if they were filthy. Not many and not all of them have any feelings and compassion for them. Most of them hate them, despise them. They would be all criminals. They would be all responsible for all these crimes. This is what they say about them. Eduardo knows all these stories that whenever something is in the news that someone, a Mexican, whatever he did, whatever he is, that a Mexican did this and that, that most of the folks, even Mexicans say that these are all those illegal migrants. They are desperate. They are on the run of the law and the only way they can make ends meet is because it's through crime and they and that these criminals that they spoil it for everyone that these criminals are the main reason why Mexicans are not liked in public these criminals are the main reason why white folks in the in America don't like Mexicans and Eduardo again feels this contempt this hatred of this people he feels it on his skin you are wrong is the feeble respond he can utter he could never really deal with all these accusations he, he never thought of an adequate response because whenever he would say no this is not the case illegal migrants they work for a living then people would always ask him well If you work for a living, if you're an honest and decent man, then believe me, boy, there would be always a, 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 a place for you in America. It's not like that Americans hate hard-working, decent folks. No, Americans hate criminals, crooks, rapists, shady people. These are the ones who do not get documents. These are the ones who do not get a job. These are the ones who live off others. And this was a dead argument. A dead argument. Eduardo never found, found a way around. And now again he stands off in front of Ines. He doesn't know what to do. He's lost. This is my last word, Ines. Ines tells him. Eduardo can do nothing but leave. You are wrong there. He tries to repeat. He tries to grapple. He is grappling with his words. I do not mean any harm. I just want to make a living for me and my mother. No. Ines' words become more and more severe. I want this to end, she tells him. Or I will call them police. And these words are enough for Eduardo. He lives like a beaten dog, but he clenches his fists. Again, he has been treated that way. Again, he has been looked down upon. Again, he was seen as something, as someone not worth dealing with. Mm-hmm.